JT Vlogs, the Texas leftist here, I've always gotten the distinct impression that the American right does not care for freedom of speech as much as they'd like us to believe, especially the ones who call themselves free speech absolutists, purists, whatever label they put on themselves. Free speech absolutism, the idea that you should defend free speech at whatever cost, regardless of how offensive or inoffensive it may be, and you should stand up for the freedom of speech of others, including those who disagree with you politically and ideologically. In theory, it sounds good, but in practice, conservatives do not put their foot forward and walk the walk or talk the talk. See, here's what I mean. This whole modern free speech movement by the right or as we now retrospectively like to call it, a grifting operation, really emerged in the mid-2010s when you had these conservative speakers who would be censored and blocked from attending their own public speeches at college campuses specifically, where people would block them, trying to prevent them from speaking, uh, interrupting them constantly, or even getting their events shut down. And people like Ben Shapiro, Steven Crowder, Milo Yiannopoulos are prime examples of these people who have faced this kind of dilemma. And I sympathize with them because as extreme as I find these people to be, they should have never been blocked or censored by these college students. And it should not also be an instance of people trying to explain that this was an epidemic happening on college campuses as a whole. But it was a talking point that worked and was effective in some ways and was just a very minor um, reason as to why Trump got elective, who proclaimed he was going to bring back freedom of speech and defend it at whatever cost. Well, as we've seen many, many years later, that free speech absolutism, like I said, is not something that conservatives practice. Because what have we seen? Well, take Israel and Gaza. Where are these people defending pro-Palestinian protesters, especially students and faculty members who expressed even the slightest amount of sympathy for the Palestinian people, even going so far as to say that Palestinians are human beings? That gets quickly shut down as anti-Semitic. Some students have been expelled. Some students have been suspended for semester. Some faculty members have been suspended or fired, and it goes beyond just those realms of, and professions as well. Not a single conservative is out here defending those people because they believe, oh, those lefties are getting what they deserve, and because we were never supported by them, we should not support them back in return. Now, hold on. You said that free speech absolutism is, is a, an important thing to uphold. You should defend the freedom of speech of those who disagree with you ideologically and politically, except when it comes to your feelings getting hurt over Israel and Gaza because you interpret what they say as anti-Semitism. Hmm. How about... Just call a spade a spade. In many cases, you just want free speech without consequences whenever it's you who expresses actual hate speech. Because I do believe hate speech exists. I'm not the kind of person who thinks we should have microphones and cars and your homes to monitor everything that's being said by people. What I am saying is, is if you absolutely uphold freedom of speech, you have to understand that certain limits apply. And those limits are freedom of speech for everyone. And you can be able to speak your mind on whatever 
even in the most controversial subjects, as long as they do not go into the realm of direct threats of violence, slander, and libel. And we have seen conservatives get away with a lot of these things in the last couple of years, especially with monsters and ghouls like Matt Walsh libs of TikTok, whose anti-trans panic rhetoric is causing real world harm and consequences, like children's hospitals getting bomb threats under the guise that they're mutilating children there when there's no proof. In Oklahoma recently, where libs of TikTok is having influence on school boards and even the state superintendent, a non-binary teenager was murdered in a school bathroom by their own classmates. And they don't want to take any responsibility for their actions because they understand that if they have to use the free speech argument, it's going to get thrown out. And I mean, pretty fast. How about maybe another recent example where Matt Walsh went on a tirade against John Oliver when he came back with a new season of his show and John Oliver used his platform of satire to call out Clarence Thomas's corruption by offering him a million dollars a year to retire plus a fancy new bus. Matt Walsh got offended by that saying that he's not funny and that he should be arrested and put in prison for trying to bribe a federal official. But do you see the genius of John Oliver's comedy? His satire got conservatives like Matt Walsh to be more offended by the comedy calling out the corruption than the actual corruption of Clarence Thomas itself that they want people to be thrown into jail for simple comedy. And Matt Walsh and comedy and taking comedy advice from him is laughable and as ridiculous as taking seafood cooking advice from Jeffrey Dahmer. But don't also take my word for, for it. This is not JT Vlogs, the Texas left is saying this. This is stuff that you have seen and can look up on the internet these past few years. Because in a sense, we all celebrate in one way or another when someone ideologically opposite of us says something overtly extreme and or maybe not as extreme as such and they get consequences from their sayings or their writings. It's important to stand up for freedom of speech, but it's an also important to stand up towards hate speech and speech that is going to be used um, for harming marginalized groups and communities. And that's all I really have to say.